Welcome to this training series from the Pulse Secure Channel Team. Today we're going to create our first virtual instance of a traffic manager. So let's go ahead and obtain the software image from the PulseSecure.net website. So let's jump in and organize the download of the virtual traffic manager software. Um, as you can see, I'm at www.pulsesecure.net. I'm on the home page and there's a try now button there that you simply click. That takes you to a screen where various software uh, can be downloaded and we want the Pulse Virtual Traffic Manager. So click on download now for that. Um, we've got a few things to fill out. So let's just fill in my name there, a business email address. Um, the email is important, it's valid as we'll, we'll, we'll be sending you an email to that particular address, which contains all of the links to the various software downloads that are available for this. Um, we've also then got another form to fill out with a few of your details, um, just so that we capture that. Um, just to make you aware, the development version of the virtual traffic manager is limited to one megabit per second and 100 SSL transactions per second. Other than that, it's a fully functioning product, uh, which does include the web app, app firewall as well. Um, just in case you were interested in that too. Um, if you need something for throughput testing, which gives you slightly more throughput uh, and unrestricted SSL transactions per second, then you can contact your Pulse Secure sales team and we can arrange it for you to receive an evaluation copy, which is actually a fully unrestricted product for 30 days. Um, but obviously to get you up and running and just to try out the product in front of applications in a development environment at least, uh, this is perfectly reasonable for that. Uh, this product as well, the development option can be clustered together. Uh, you can cluster two devices together to prove clustering and failover and that sort of thing as well within your environment. So let's just key in a few details here. Uh, Pulse Secure, company size, uh, address, and just a few more things. And there we go, and the country, United Kingdom, and we'll click there. Now, once that form's filled in, um, we've just got to accept the license agreement, which should pop up any minute. There you go, and then we hit continue. Now, I'm gonna pause the video here because this, this email takes around about 25 to 30 seconds to generate and be sent to you. So I'm just gonna pause and I'll join you uh, back again in a moment. And there we go, we're back again. Um, so that took around 25 seconds for me. Um, obviously give it about 30 seconds or so, but uh, you should receive an email to your mailbox. Uh, once that pops into my mailbox, I'll double click on it and show you guys. There it is there. So this is the mail I received from uh, pulsesecure-portal at pulsesecure.net. It's literally just a few uh, links to various images that we can provide you for the development option. Uh, you can see there we've got a couple of software download options. We've also got some hypervisor images. Today we'll be working with VMware OVF, by the way. I, I've got workstations, so that's perfectly reasonable for me. Um, and then we also have a bare metal appliance version as well, if that's something you're interested in. So essentially, once you've got the email, just select the one you want, download the software, and I'll show you what to do with that, uh, how to install, etc. in the next video. Thank you very much. See you soon. Let's go ahead and create the virtual machine. Right, so um, I've downloaded the file now. Um, as you saw in the previous video, or hopefully you saw in the previous video, um, I selected the OVF file for download from the website, from the various links that I had in my email that I received um, after filling in the relevant details for the evaluation. I'm now going to open this and, uh, and get it installed. So we're just going to open. Um, I've already unzipped the OVF from the zip file that was downloaded. So I'm just going to point at that. I'm going to rename this um, something meaningful. So this is actually a version 17.4 machine. Um, I've already created uh, a, uh, a directory in which I will place this virtual machines and uh, where are we? Sorry, bear with me. There we go. 
demonstration VTM 17.4 and we'll import that. Uh, just accept the various license agreement details and off we go. Now this import can take some time. Um, basically what I'll do is I'll uh, I'll leave this running for a little while and um, I may well skip through the video so uh, we'll see how long it takes but if it's only going to be a few seconds then I'll leave it running. Uh, it looks like it might only take a, a little while here. Obviously depends on the power of your machine. Um, I've got 16 gig of memory and uh, an SSD drive in this particular laptop so it's, it's pretty quick. So I'll just let that run. Hopefully it will get to the end pretty soon and we'll see that the the virtual machine is uh, is installed in the environment. Just a few more seconds hopefully and then we should see the machine appear on the left hand side. There we go. So you can see now I've got a demonstration VTM. Uh, what I'll just show you is the various uh, machine settings that it comes with. So um, you might not need all of these. Uh, the single processor, two gig of memory. Um, it's got a hard disk uh, of 16 gig. Network adapter at the moment is bridged. Um, obviously that will depend on your own environment, what you set this to. And the display is auto detect. Um, in the next video, I'll show you how to um, initially configure this machine. So. Hopefully you'll join me in the next one. Thanks very much. So let's create the initial VTM configuration now. So we've got the initial uh, demonstration VTM uh, loaded up into workstation. As I said before, I downloaded the OVF file from the originating email that was sent to me from the PulseSecure.net website. Um, just one change I've made, I've actually configured my network adapter to be on VMNet 8, which is the network I use um, in order to run my, my demonstration environment. Obviously that will depend on your own particular setup and your configuration as to what your network um, settings are within your hypervisor environment. Um, so let's go ahead and power on the machine. So what this is going to do now, uh, this is the very first time it's been powered on. What will happen is it will it will boot, go through its various booting processes. And um, in terms of my environment, at least, it will configure itself with a DHCP address from my virtualized networking uh, configuration, which probably will be the same for you guys as well, depending on which hypervisor you're using, obviously. Um, whether you're in uh, something like ESX or VMware uh, of another another flavor or, or whether indeed you're using workstation as I am, um, somewhere within that configuration, you will be able to configure your DHCP environment. And uh, as you can see, my environment has come back and it's assigned .134 from within my .159 um, uh, 24-bit network. Now, I'm now gonna switch to a browser and key in that exact address and actually um, go to the web service on port 9090 for this particular machine. So let's just swap over to uh, my browser and we'll do that now. So HTTPS uh, 92.168.159.134 on port 9090. Uh, that should take me to the admin console. eventually hopefully it will take me there soon um, if there is a slight delay it could well be that the um, uh, the machine is actually still bringing up the web service but just bear with me okay it's timed out it's interesting ah there we go just took a while to come up and as soon as I accept the initial screen I'm into the uh, initial configuration wizard now this is just a few steps um, for initial config. There'll be this welcome screen, um, a license agreement, some networking config, some DNS, um, some date and time configuration, and then uh, a licensing page, and we should be ready to go. So let me just take you through those. So initially just click on next, uh, accept the license agreement, uh, which you can read at this, this link here. I'm not gonna bother going there now, but you guys can read that if you need to. 
so next and then we're going to configure this with the host name now within my environment i have um, a localized dns server running on a linux um, vm so i'm actually going to configure my environment with dns for demonstration obviously you could use ip it doesn't have to uh, use a dns environment but for for this one i will so this machine is going to be known as demo one I'm going to give it a dot 60 address because that's what I use for this particular environment. Uh, my gateway within the networking configuration for workstation is dot two on the 159 network. And that should actually be all I need for this. Just make sure it's a static IP address and off we go. Uh, my name server. So my DNS environment is on dot 80 and my domain is london.paul.com and i'm going to configure next and then the time zone for me at least will be europe london again just pick the one that makes sense for you guys uh, where are we europe london there we go and next and then i'm asked to just give a administration password which i will do and click next now this screen is just asking me whether or not i already have either a license key or an eval key or something like that i don't actually have that at the moment um so what i will do is i i will say skip licensing for now and run in developer mode which essentially means that my traffic manager will be fully functional but it will be restricted at one megabit per second egress back to client and uh, it will be restricted to 100 ssl um, termination and encryptions per second so for demo obviously that's fine um, if you're throughput testing then you'll probably need to talk to us at pulse to get an eval license um, if you want to cluster more than two of these machines together which will be shown in future videos then you'll also need uh, an evaluation license to do that the developer mode and the developer license is simply the software without a key actually on the software to open it up to a a another version of of that particular um, throughput so we only restrict on throughput essentially um, so the key just opens up the product from anywhere from one meg up to um, unrestricted actually um, so if you are interested in, in obtaining an evaluation license by the way for throughput testing or you know multiple clustered environments um, or and you just need you know higher levels of throughput then please just either get in touch with anybody in the pulse team um, or you can contact me directly uh, my name is Paul Goodchild I am the channel SE as I've said before um, for the VADC business unit within pulse so just drop me a line at uh, pgoodchild at pulsesecure.net uh, or you can call me on uh, 07919 316 713 so I'm, as I said, I'm going to skip this licensing for now um, and we'll run in developer mode. So there it just gives you uh, an overview of the configuration. Uh, obviously check and make sure everything's good. Say finish and then you're actually given um, a raised IP address that you've just configured uh, or as, uh, as I have on dot 60 for 9090. And we can click on that now and go to our traffic manager. So I will do that. Um, the IP addressing has now been changed, obviously. So uh, we'll just wait for this VM to, to come up. Like I say, it could, it could be a few minutes, may not be available immediately, as it says here. So we'll just give that a while to come back. Uh, we'll try again. There we go. So. You might get a few of those retries needed. Uh, it just takes a while for the uh, the web service to, to kick in and the IP address to be changed. So don't worry about that. Just give it a few seconds and uh, hopefully it will be there. And then everything should be ready to go. You can see here we are running in developer mode. Like I said before, it's a 17.4 um, software version. It's called Demo 1, which we've uh, just configured ourselves. And to sign in, you simply say admin and the password you gave it earlier. And in we go. Um, just choose developer mode, unless you, like I say, you've already got an evaluation key or a license key to use. In this case, we haven't. And there we go, all ready and uh, waiting to be configured. So that concludes the initial configuration and the, uh, the configuration wizard steps. And hopefully I'll see you in the next video.
thanks very much.